Hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope that God is using this time in your lives and just teaching you some awesome things. So, you know, we're praying for you guys. We miss you a lot. And so we just wanted to spend some time in, in the devotional this morning. So, if you have your Bibles, please turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 15. And you can also put a bookmark in James, chapter 3, if you want, as we're going to spend some time in both of these chapters today. A little bit more reading today. You know, and that's truly that's truly what our devotional time should be, right? It's a time where we're reading and we're gleaning from the words of the Lord. You know, I want to encourage you. I want to bless you. But I can only do so much. God's word has so much encouragement here for you. So, that being said, if you're in Proverbs chapter 15, let's go ahead and read the first four verses. And today's the 15th, so I figured it was appropriate to go to Proverbs 15, right? All right, so starting in verse 1, reading through verse 4. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise, use, the tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pulls, pours forth foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and on the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. You know, we see the, the power of your words here. And we don't, we don't oftentimes think before we speak, right? It's so much easier for us to speak than it is to, to stop it and to think. I remember my dad used to tell me as a kid, because I, uh, I used to talk just nonstop. And I used to drive people nuts. And my dad used to tell me, God gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason. So you could hear twice as much as you speak, right? And uh, we just like to, sometimes we just like to speak. But we have to be careful with our words when we're speaking. You know, it says a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And you guys have all seen this. You know, you see a situation that's about to unfold. You see this person's about to get upset, maybe. And um, how you respond to that person is going to decide where the situation is going to go from there. You know, if somebody is, you can tell by their body language, they, they're just ready for a fight. They want to fight. They want to argue. And you respond with a snappy comeback then it's probably just going to escalate the situation. You know, we also learned from uh, from Thumper, those of us who grew up with uh, Disney movies, you know, that if you can't say nothing nice, then don't say nothing at all, right? And there's wisdom there. Uh, I love verse 4, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. You know, just as that tongue can be a tree of life, it can be that source of encouragement, it can also break the spirit. You know, we can be really crushed by people's words, or we can be really built up by them. And it's such an amazing thing. It's such a heartbreaking thing when you see somebody being crushed by words. But it's really awesome when you're having a tough time, or, or you're just seeking answers, and you reach out to a friend, and you don't know what to expect from this conversation. And God just blesses you through that person. And your spirit is lifted up, and you feel encouraged. So we want to be that source of encouragement today, right? Because, you know, a lot of us are are in closer confinement and we're seeing a lot more of each other than we maybe do on a regular basis. Maybe some more than others. And you know, maybe some people their schedule hasn't changed too much, but most of us are, are in a phase right now where we're a little bit more cooped up than usual and it's easier for uh, us to be impatient. But it's important for us to take the time to stop and remember and think about the power that our words have. You know, are we building our brothers and sisters up or are we tearing them down? Are we being that tree of life, or are we breaking their spirit? To conclude that thought, let's turn to James chapter 3. There's a lot of verses here, my bad. Um, but we're going to read verses 1 through 12, okay? All right. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man able also to brittle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts many great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, 
and it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea, is tamed, and has been tamed by mankind, but no man can tame the tongue. It is un an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men, who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus, no spring yields both salt water and fresh. You know, there's a lot in those verses, and I encourage you to take some time and to read over those verses and, and uh, see what God might teach you through those verses. I'm not going to break apart every single verse in there, because we're keeping these kind of shorter. But, you know, that, that ending thought... Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. And so, you know, James isn't implying that, you know, we as Christians can reach a state of perfection that, you know, just as that spring shouldn't be giving salt water and fresh water. He's not saying that you can get to a place as a Christian where you will never ever pour out that salty water, that you'll always be fresh water. We're not going to be perfect until we are, you know, in our glorified bodies with God in heaven until that moment, as long as we're living on this earth, we're not going to be perfect. But what can we see about that fig tree or that, you know, was it the, uh, yeah, the, the olive, you know, um, can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? You know, those things aren't meant to grow the other thing. And so what you need to look at is why does a, why does an apple tree grow apples? It grows apples because that is the essence. That is the core of what it is. That is the life that is pouring through that tree is this is an apple. It's, you know, what it was designed to produce. You know, we need to look on the inside of us and say, okay, what do people hear when we speak? What are the things that are coming out? Because the words that you speak, how you speak to one another, how you speak to those in the world, the words that are coming out of your mouth, they reflect what's going on in your heart. And so this is my encouragement is to is to read these verses and to pray about it and to seek inside your heart and say, you know, God, I want my heart, I want my fruit to reflect you. I want my words and my actions to reflect you in my life and not something else. I don't want people to be broken down by my words. I want them to be lifted up. So ask yourselves, whether you're in the Foundation Youth Group and you're tuning into this or you're part of the church or maybe you're not even a part of any church and you're tuning into this, you know, whoever you may be, ask yourself, are your words building people up or are they breaking people down? And ask yourself, you know, do you want to be building people up in this time? When you exit this time, when you go on to the next chapter, you know, how do you want to, to remember? How do you want to look back on that time and say, you know what? I chose to use this time and I called people and I gave them encouragements and I prayed for them and, and I, you know, were your words a blessing or was it a curse? You know, and that's where I want to leave you guys today. It's just a little bit of point of application, a little bit of, um, yeah, you can kind of meditate that on your, on your own and, and ask God, God, how can I be doing more to bless people with my tongue? And God, help me to, you know, control the things that come out of my mouth. Help me to have a strong filter. So that's where we're going to end it today. Going to have a little prayer and then we'll wrap up. So Lord, we thank you for... We thank you for the fact that you desire to use us, the imperfect beings that we are. God, you are so perfect, and you can just choose your angels for everything. But God, you desire to include us in this process. So God, I pray that we would be good stewards of your word. God, that the words that come out of our mouths would be wholesome, that we would be a source of encouragement and not a source of, of pain or um, discouragement in this time. So Lord, just be with us today. God, just continue to grow grow our hearts to fall more and more in love with you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you were blessed. I hope you have a great day. We'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye.